Hi everybody, this is Don Dixon again. We're uh, making a huge study on structure. We've got 17 different types we have to uh, deal with. So as we begin this discussion on humps, it's so important. I wasn't planning on doing a lot of mapping and detail mapping and interpretation of humps, but so much of this has to come out when talking about humps that I am going to be adding some detail mapping points that you need to understand as we talk about humps, what will produce, what won't. So for those of you who maybe don't have much of an idea about detail mapping, how to determine whether a structure will produce or whether it won't, uh, I did make a video quite a few years ago during our on the water school up in Canada and had a group of students and it's about an hour, it's, I think it's an hour and 40 minutes long. It's, it's pretty detailed stuff. So look that up, mapping interpretation of structure. So as we continue this discussion, I don't want to sort of veer off into a, a discussion on mapping and interpretation. However, I do want to set two qualifying examples for you that from the very beginning, we first have to understand this. We know that there's good structure from bad structure. There's good structure, bad structure. You can't have a fish without structure, but you can have structure without a fish. So in the case of humps, different from the bars and some other structures, we're emphasizing both sides of our little saying that must lead from the shallows, which is eight to 10 feet or less, all the way to deep water for it to even begin to meet the qualification of being a productive structure. There are some other things that are involved which we're going to talk about later in our mapping and, and detail mapping and interpretation series. But first of all, it must lead from a shallow to deeper, it's not going to be any good. In other words, if I had a shallow water home, it's sitting in the shallows and it's surrounded by 20 foot water and the 20 feet is just flat. All, as far as you can go out three miles later out there, there's the channel or there's the deep hole. That structure is no good. It doesn't lead to the deep. It's shallow, but it doesn't lead to the deep. On the other hand, we can have a mid-lake hump sitting out there in the middle of the lake that crowns, or the shallowest point, is about 18 feet. And it's surrounded by 70 feet of water, deepest water in the lake. It won't produce, because it doesn't lead to the shallows. Remember, the shallows is 8 to 10 feet or less. If it only leads to 17 feet or only leads up to 20 feet, it's not going to produce. It's a dead end for the fish. It's got to lead all the way. Then you can have a deep water hump. Here's another one. You got a deep water hump. And the crown of that, let's say we find a deep water hump out there. It's sitting around, it's surrounded by 70 feet of water and it crowns at a depth of 35 feet. It doesn't lead to the shallows. So therefore, it's a dead end to the fish. It could, it could serve as a break in the sanctuary zone, but it's not a migration route. It's not going to produce. So if you look at all of the rules involved, you could say of the three basic types of humps, two of them don't meet the requirements. They don't lead all the way. So therefore, why do we even talk about them? Well, there's a reason, and here it is. You can have a shallow water hump, like I just described, sitting and surrounded by 20 foot flats, not leading anywhere, won't produce. But you could have a shallow hump, crowns at three feet, and it's sitting in 15 feet of water, but it's sitting on top of a larger structure, a bar. Then therefore that small shallow hump will produce fish because it's a break on the structure. So you have fish moving up that structure, migration time, there'll be some fish feed up onto that hump and you catch fish off that hump. And you say, well, it's just sitting in the shallows, it doesn't lead to deep. Well, yes it does, because it's connected to something that does lead to the deep. And then you can reverse that whole discussion and say, okay, I've got a deep water hump. I find one of these in New York. I have to tell you that story when we, when we get to specifics. Find one in New York, Canisius Lakes, it's the exact same thing. It was crowning at 35 feet of water and it was surrounded by 60 or 70 feet of water, but it's a dead end. It only crowns at 35 feet. But by following a very deep break line, the drop off to that hump, 
followed it and followed it and followed it. It turned around and swung in, came up and connected right to a shoreline bar. It was a deep break on a structure and it produced fish all summer long. I was catching walleyes off that structure in New York, I'll tell you about it later, where they didn't think there were any walleyes in the lake. So you can have all three pumps that are producing fish if they either meet the qualifications, which I just talked about, it's got to lead from the shallows all the way to deep water, or be connected to, be in connection with a feature that does lead all the way. So we're going to talk about all three types of humps. Those are the pure humps, deep water on all four sides. And then we're going to talk about two other hump-like structure types that are almost the same, but a little bit different. We'll get to them later. One is a saddle situation. It's a deep hump, great in rivers, always looking for them in rivers and natural lakes. But I really love these structures in rivers. It's, it appears to be an underwater hump, except it, it connects to both shorelines. It just has deep water on the upstream side, deep water on the, on the second side. So it's like an underwater hump, but only deep water on two sides, not traditional four sides. Terrific structures. And we'll talk more about them in, in interpretation and so on and so forth, but I love saddles. And then we have what was mentioned earlier yesterday, we were talking about uh, delta reservoirs, a hump-like feature along a riverbank that was flooded and now is a reservoir, a lowland two reservoir, and it's, it creates the same dead end to the fish that some of these humps, we're going to be talking about, some of these humps are just dead ends to the fish. They don't lead all the way. If they don't lead all the way, they won't be productive. So we'll define it all later, but those are our main five different types of humps we're going to be discussing over the next few days. So be sure to like us on Facebook and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell all your friends. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you soon.